Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So when I put videos up of uh, tournaments or talking about tournament rules, one of the things that often comes up is people say, oh, why don't you use weighted scoring or you know, target specific scoring? For example, three points for a head hit, two points for a torso hit and one point for a hit on the limbs. That's just a, an example. Obviously, you can change those points or uh, locations as you like. Um, and the simple answer is, we do sometimes. Uh, we have used um, weighted scoring or target location scoring over the years. It's not particularly popular, um, or it hasn't been particularly popular over the last probably five years. Although there is, does seem like there's a movement towards uh, target location scoring coming back in a bit and you know often these things go in go in waves of popularity they go up and down um, but yeah the simple fact is that there are uh, scoring systems in HEMA which do take into consideration the location of the hit and there are rules which don't um, and just really I want to flag up two problems with um, with target specific scoring uh, and the reason why I don't use it at my event at Fight Camp, although that might not always stay the same in the future. Um, just before I move on to those two reasons, I just mentioned that uh, historically we know that both types of scoring was used. We know that there was scoring which was uh, like, you know, basically a, a hit anywhere on the body is a point. Um, but equally we know that there was uh, scoring used in competitive bouts which was location specific and we can see this in uh, a couple of the Bolognese sources in uh, Manchelino and, um, and the Anonimo uh, Bolognese uh, where we can see that they did weight certain locations more, more favourably. However, it's not always as you would seem. So when people score uh, locations in modern um, competition rules, they tend to think of it in terms of what they think would be most fatal or most uh, incapacitating. So they tend to give the most points for a head, for example, or a thrust in the body, and the least points for hands and feet and legs and stuff like that. However, that's not necessarily how it was in the historical scoring. In the historical scoring, of course, they weren't necessarily learning to um, uh, aiming to replicate sort of the reality of combat, they might be in introducing scoring to accentuate certain skills or look for, uh, look for challenging goals. Um, for example, we know that at least in one rule set, they gave a higher um, point scoring for a hit on the feet. Okay? Now you think that's just crazy because a hit in the foot is not going to kill anyone. Well, you, technically you could kill someone with a cut in the foot if they bled to death, but generally speaking the foot is not going to be as incapacitating as a hit in the head. However, you think about the difficulty of hitting someone in the foot, and actually the head is not a particularly difficult target to hit. Uh, in, in our sparring, whatever rule system we're using, whatever scoring system we're using, hits in the head happen a, f a fair amount. They happen, happen quite often because you think about where the weapon is and where your hand is and the head's pretty close to it. The foot on the other hand is a long way away from it. So giving extra points for a hit to the foot is really a measure of skill being applied in the way that you want to apply it. So a really good swordsman could, uh, could dominate the opponent in the high line and hit a person in the foot and not get hit in their own head in the process of it. So it's the rules are not always there to um, kind of role play reality. Sometimes the rules are there to reward an amazing feat of fencing skill and that amazing feat of fencing skill isn't always necessarily representative of what you would actually do in a real duel or a real fight or in, on the battlefield. It might just simply be a feat of skill. Okay, so think about the rule set a little bit more broadly than just role-playing reality. Rule sets are there to test swordsmanship skill in all the myriad of, of, of what that means. Okay? So the two real points that I think need to be borne in mind in, that go against the use of target-specific scoring, of weighted scoring, uh, first of all, you have to think about the rules um, finding a way to get around the possibility for someone sacrificing a low point target in order to hit the opponent's high point target. And I have seen this done to win the final fight in a tournament. It was many years ago um, and we were still in the early days of running HEMA tournaments in those days but someone did block uh, an incoming sword blow with their arm 
to deliver a hit to the opponent's head. Now, yes, you could do this in reality. You could sacrifice your arm to hit the opponent's head. However, there are two main problems with that. One, if you take a full-blown full blown, uh, sword cut in your arm, it's fairly possible that you might die from blood loss or infection, but even so, it's still not, generally speaking, a thing that wants to be rewarded, you know, sacrificing a limb in order to hit the opponent. Um, but the other, other thing to think about is if it was a really committed blow, it could potentially go through the arm and into the person's neck or head anyway, okay? So <laughs> just because the hit lands there with a blunt weapon doesn't mean that it would stop there with a sharp weapon. It might pass all the way through and, and carry on and fatally wound the person. So we, if you are going to have weighted scoring, you've got to think of a way to get around this problem of someone sacrificing a low point target to protect a high point target, or equally deliberately sticking, you know, for example, a cut's coming in, just grabbing a full-blown cut in the hand, boom, to hit the other person in the head. You've got to think about ways that you can get around that because people will always play to the rules. No matter what rules you make, people will try and game the rules, okay? Um, the second point is that weighting certain parts of the body for certain points, as it's usually done, so giving more points for a head hit or a body thrust, for example, makes a lot of assumptions. The fact of the matter is, is that if you get an artery nicked in your arm or leg, you can die from that really quite quickly. Conversely, there are many historical records of people having weapons run through their body and sometimes um, cuts into their head and blows to their head and thrusts through the face and all those kind of things that actually don't incapacitate them. They carry on fighting and sometimes win the fight. And I've given some examples in previous videos I've done. Um, but there are many, many cases from history of this happening. People can take a sword blow to the head and they might drop down dead or they might be absolutely fine. And so this is the real problem, is that in giving a point allocation to a hit with a blunt weapon on an area of someone's body doesn't tell you anything about what that blow or thrust or cut would have done with a real sharp weapon on a real person's body. Um, and that's really the problem, is that saying automatically that any hit on the head is worth more points than any hit on the arm, that doesn't make any anatomical sense. It could only make sense in fencing terms if you want to reward hits to the head more than you reward hits to the arm. And that's fine. If you're introducing it as a, as a false as a false uh, goal, I suppose, to measure fencing skill. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But if you're introducing it because of like simulating reality and trying to make the, the fight, the competition fight, into a simulation or role play of what would happen in a real deal, you're kidding yourselves. Okay? The fact of the matter is, is that I could take a thrust in the face that goes in this side of my face and comes out this side of my face, and that is a very minor wound. Okay? Sir Richard Francis Burton had a spear thrown into his face, he had a lifelong scar down his face, it knocked out teeth, it split his palate, it did some mess to his face, but he carried on fighting. In fact, he just, according to his own account anyway, he dispatched several of the enemy with his sabre after that. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of your head is actually not very fatal to get wounded in. Equally, your torso, there are certain bits of your torso that if you get run through or cut there, it's actually not going to do a huge amount of damage. It's certainly not going to incapacitate you or put you out of the fight. So, those are my two main problems with um, uh, scoring specific body targets for different amounts. Is The problem is, is if you're doing it just for uh, measuring fencing skill or as an artificial kind of, you know, a way of uh, giving people goals, within the, the fight, that's fine. But if you're doing it to try and simulate reality, you're just kidding yourselves, okay? Because you can never really know or measure what the effect a sharp sword would have on hitting a specific part of someone's body. And remember also that for a cut, for example, a cut has to land with the edge leading, with no twist in the blade, and usually with a bit of push and pull to cut effectively. There are so many variables involved in that you could hit someone really, really hard in the head, and if you twist the blade, it's just going to be like punching them in the head. It's not going to have, it's not going to give them a real wound. So you can never really guess what a blunt weapon hit in sparring or competition would actually do. So there we go, something to think about. Cheers, guys.